From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. From the London Telegraph newspaper. I don't know if I'm surprised or not. Scientists found that men were able to spot a cheating heart in more than 9 out of 10 cases. They were also more likely to catch out their partner's lies than women. That's an interesting phrase. Catch out their partner's lies. You know this was not written by an American. <laughs> However, the... Study also found that men's suspicious minds made them more likely to suspect infidelity, even where there was none. That's okay with me. Better safe than sorry. Paul Andrews from Virginia Commonwealth University in Virginia, amazingly enough, carried out the research. We had to go to England to get the results says here, he said, 80% of women's inferences about fidelity or infidelity were correct. But men were even better. Accurate 94% of the time. Wow. Is that because of Spectre Pro? <laughs> another software, another gadgets, I don't know. He said, men have far more at stake. When a female partner is unfaithful, a man may himself lose the opportunity to reproduce and find himself investing his resources in raising the offspring of another man. Hey, 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 you are right. The study tested fidelity among 203 young couples by giving them confidential questionnaires which asked them to detail if they had ever been unfaithful and if they had ever suspected or discovered that their partner had strayed. The findings, highlighted by New Scientist magazine, show that 29% of men admitted they had cheated, compared to 18.5% of women. While the men were better at judging a partner's fidelity, they were also more adept at catching them out. There it is again. In total, the men detected 75% of the reported infidelities, while just 41% of women uncovered that their partner had been unfaithful. However, the researchers believe that faced with heightened suspicions, women have evolved to become better at hiding their indiscretions than men. <laughs> really? Says your analysis of the results suggests an extra 10% of the women in the study had cheated on their partners in addition to the 18.5% who admitted to it. By contrast, the men had been honest about their cheating, the figures suggest, because we cheat. Come on, we're dogs. <laughs> we are. It says here David Buss from the University of Texas at Austin said that the study added to the evidence that men have evolved defenses to detect their partner's cheating, which, quote, leads men to err on the side of caution by overestimating a partner's infidelity. So I'm looking for something out of the recent past, folks, something out of the recent past. Have you caught someone cheating? Are you on the verge of catching someone cheating? I've got to know. Tom, Tom. Tom like it. 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show with the shortest breaks ever. That's right. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. Have you recently caught someone cheating? I want all the details, all the dirt, and on top of that, are you on the verge of catching someone? Maybe you've been compiling data. Love to know. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Here's Megan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Uh, Long-time listener. 
Um, I was just calling because I have never caught anybody cheating, but I have cheated. And um, the reasons were not because of what I think men cheat for, which is because they just like to cheat. They like doing what they do. They're, that's just what they do, whereas women do it simply for spite. And Is that so? That's what I think. Is that that's what you did? did that. No, let me understand. Tell me the yeah. story. What made you cheat? Uh, well, I mean, simple. It was like little things, like my boyfriend wouldn't come over that night, and so I'd be like, oh, well, that's it, and I would go out, and I would do my thing, and I my thing would just end up being that. Does that make sense? You were doing I someone just, else's thing. Yes, but, but it was simply for spite, not because I... It was just, I was angry, I was bitter, and I was like, oh, well, I'll show him. Whereas I think. Which goes against the traditional wisdom, which supposedly is that uh, women cheat because they have emotional reasons. They're not getting enough uh, intimacy oh. from their boyfriend or husband. Well, I think that is an emotional reason. I wasn't doing it because I, I was needing something, I was doing it because I was emotionally retarded in some way, and I thought that. That would be a way of him like getting. But back did it him. fulfill your need? No. Well, no. that's my point. You see, what they usually say is that women fulfill their need for intimacy by finding no. it somewhere else. No. You, you, you <laughs> did the same thing, but you did it for a different reason. Yes. Exactly. And and, and here's the thing: Did you get any satisfaction out of it? Why? Well, Wait a minute. I, I, and by the way, I'm not picking on you. I'm picking on everybody who does this. Why? Um. Why did I get? I, I, um, why I would get you get satisfaction? satisfaction? He doesn't know you're doing it. Oh well. Did, did, oh, I thought you meant like did I get sexual satisfaction? No, no, any satisfaction. Oh, Tom. Yes. Yes. Um, my baby's crying. I, I'm gonna I have to that. go. Oh <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> 25 years old already with the baby and the affairs. Where's that going? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. No, no, I have to ask that question. I have to ask. Like, why would you get satisfaction out of doing it? You know, I say this as a repeat offender. I cheated and cheated and cheated. And you want to know something? Going back in time, thinking about it? I cheated as a, a passive-aggressive act. I didn't want to be in the relationship. And for whatever reason, I felt like I was not able to get out. So I was the inmate rebelling. And the real truth was I shouldn't be in that kind of relationship. So now it's impossible to cheat. I live alone, and if I come home late, that's the way it is. I live alone. Done. And uh, by the way, <laughs> I, I'm up to a lot less of that kind of mischief, going to great lengths to uh, cheat, great lengths to get laid. I won't say who I did this to because it would be a, a tragedy if they found out and they'd probably ruin their day, probably lose their lunch. But I once, uh, I once was going out of town on business. And I had um, a female in a relationship with me, and she insisted on coming with me out of town on business. And she came out of town on business with me, and as so often happened, she didn't really want to be out of town on business with me. She just wanted to be there to keep her wary eye on me. So she got there and saw me doing nothing but business. And she was bored to tears, as per usual. So finally, I had bored her to the point of her saying, well, I'm going to let you uh, do your thing here. I'm going to say goodnight. I'm going upstairs. And what she didn't know is that I had arranged a hotel room two blocks away. And so the second she went to bed, uh, I hightailed it up to the other hotel where there was booze, there were chicks. And I had a uh, male friend who uh, had uh, lined up a little party at the other hotel room. But I did that because I was resentful that I was in this relationship. And it was my own fault I was in the relationship. It was my own fault. It was my own fault I got into it. It was my own fault I stayed in it. 
And finally, uh, I'd been in the relationship long enough that uh, she didn't want to get out of the relationship, and I did. So I acted out. And I finally realized that I just shouldn't be in a relationship like that. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Uh, have you caught someone cheating recently? Or are you on the verge of catching someone uh, cheating? Do tell. Lisa on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, how are you? I just caught my husband cheating this spring. You did? Yes. How did it, how did it happen? Well, long story short, we married 18 years, and he was married before, and I was to it. Uh, I helped raise his children, and then I have two of my own, a 12 and a 14-year-old. Traveled all the time and owned his own business. His employee turned on him and called me. I had feelings, but then he would say, you're nuts, you're crazy, no, no, no. And then in May, a phone call rang at 1030 in the morning, and everything I thought was, it just matched exactly. And then when confronting him, he admitted it. Really? Yes. Well, first it was only one time, and then I said, no, 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 don't go there. But the worst was being um, a 40-year-old, 40, late 40s educated man and having sex with no condom. And That's you found it. out because uh, your foo-foo was itchy or what? No, no. His employee called, he called me and said, you know, this is what's happening. He's living a double life. And I'm at home taking the kids to squash lessons, tennis lessons, piano lessons. Mainline mom, just doing everything we're from the Northeast. And here I find he's had a double life. You said you're from the Northeast? Min no. Minute and 19 seconds. I don't know. What did you say? No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I just, I, I'm still with them. We're, we're trying to work it out. Like, one never knows what goes on. Well, that's true. Now, did he ever in therapy or anywhere else tell you what he did and why he did it? No. I went to therapy, but he refused to go, and that, now we're at the point where it's, oh, it's over with, and move on. Move on, Dad, like, move on. And my children are very angry. My kids are not past it, and uh, it's very dysfunctional, just like move on. So you told your kids about it? Yes. What did they say? Well, my daughter was very angry. My son, of course, is, uh, was as 12, so he was crying and upset, but um, she's very angry because he said, well, this is between your mother and I said, no, you're the first person I ever trust in my life, and you're setting me up for not trusting anyone. Wow. All right, Lisa, thank you for that story. I appreciate it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Janet on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Well, I've been cheated on before, and I've cheated on a spouse. Well, not a spouse, but like a partner before. And earlier, one of the ladies was saying, like, it's in spite. I don't necessarily think it's in spite. I just think it's like, you know, like, if the guy isn't satisfying you in a certain way, you try to look for it in other places. Does that make sense? Nah, explain more. I don't really understand. Well, like, sexually, you know, like, um, if he isn't satisfying you, you want to go and find it somewhere else and see if you could get that emotional attachment with someone else. So, um... <laughs> What is the point of being with one person and having an emotional attachment with another? Well, I don't know. It's kind of like it's like a like a backup in a way. It's like that's I why I don't understand it because that indicates to me that you always have to be in a relationship. It feels it feels good to be in a relationship. Of course, like he ended up finding out that I cheated on him, but in a, in a way, it just worked out, you know, because he cheated on me too. Well, I, I see here on the screen you're 20 years old. I always say that's too young to be in a serious relationship anyway. Yeah, it is. I mean, I don't understand why people keep doing that. It, it doesn't work. Well, it's like if, if you go around and just sleep around with, a, like, a lot of different people, it doesn't make me feel good. I know that. But you, you are doing that, except what you're doing is you are pretending that you have some kind of emotional attachment that you really don't completely understand. In this case, you were with someone you hardly knew. Yeah. But well, you made yourself feel better about having sex with him by saying you were in a relationship with him. Well, this person, this other person that I cheated on my ex with was a someone that I knew for a really long time. So I did know that person. Yeah, but you if that person was so wonderful, you would have had the relationship with him. 
He was a loser, though. He was just like a, a loser guy. Like he didn't, So wait he didn't a minute. Like, That's even worse. You were having a relationship <laughs> with a guy you did not respect. But to feel good about having sex with him, you convinced yourself you had feelings for him, too. Yeah. But I in did. reality, you had no respect for the guy. You just told me the guy was a loser. Yeah. So you see what I'm trying to tell you, darling? Yeah. I yeah you do yeah, sleep I'm... around, but in order to make yourself feel good about it, you lie to yourself. And you say, oh, I love him, but I now I'm in love with this other guy. Okay. No, you're not. You're just sleeping around. Yeah. He ended up just, like, catching us out, like, in his part of town. You know, and that's how the whole thing happened. You were thrilled that you got caught, too. <laughs> not exactly. I felt, of course, I felt bad, but it, it was, I felt like it was going to happen eventually. You were hoping. It ended the relationship. I know that. You, and the thing is, you didn't have the guts to end it yourself. You needed to get caught. Subconsciously. <laughs> so now, let me guess, you've got another boyfriend. I don't have a boyfriend. You'd like to? Uh, just a guy. Just some sort of male attention is fine for me. How about just getting laid? <laughs> I do get laid, but I like male attention just going out to dinner with a guy, you know? Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, but most of us just want to get laid, to tell you the <laughs> truth. <laughs> Even when we're out to dinner with you, we're thinking about having sex with you after dinner. We're not listening to you. Mm -hmm. You know how that works, right? Yeah, I listen to you all the time, Tom, I know. Well, let's see that. But, yeah. when, but when we're having dinner with you, we're not listening to you. Okay. We're just we're just uh, biding our time until you take your clothes off. <laughs> you're right, Tom, you're right. Well, all it was right. nice talking to you. I'm sure it was. Thank you for the call. All right. <laughs> 1-800-5800, Tom, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Chris on the Tom Likas hey. show. Hey. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much. Nice. I did, just in a quick response to that last story, too, man. It's a, it's kind of a trend that I'm seeing that these, these people just don't want to, you know, they want to get in relationships, but they don't really want to be in a relationship, so they'll they'll pretend like they're in a relationship, and then they'll just sleep around. Like, I, I don't understand that, you know. like Well, it's all about women still thinking that sleeping around makes them a slut. So right. they feel this obligation to call every guy they sleep with their boyfriend. Yeah. Or or to protect we, we have deaf we do we have deaf people on the line? Was Whatever. That... <laughs> don't, don't try to pretend like it's a relationship, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Well anyways, uh on to my story. Uh Tom my ex girl was cheating on me about uh about two years ago. Uh, in college. We were actually at a party and uh there was and I stepped outside for a minute, walked back inside, she's up at the DJ booth hanging out with the DJ. I did about six all right, this is an unlistenable connection, so uh, Dean will try to get a better connection so we can hear the whole story, because I, I can't even listen to that. Mary, all the time, by the way, I said Dean would uh, get a better connection. Dean just hung up on him. <laughs> Mary, on the Tom Likas show. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Said, yeah, we're done with him. We're done with him. I'm okay, Mary. Hi. Yes. How are you? Oh, boy, this is going to take forever. I'm doing great. I know. I'm this is like when I go to the. This is like when I go to a sporting event, and they've got one of those people singing the national anthem. And, uh, recording artist, Grammy award winning recording. We know we're going to be listening to the national anthem for an hour and a half, uh, and that's what this call sounds like already. Go ahead, Mary. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Gene on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Well, my husband caught me cheating. Really? Yeah. It was really awful. I felt really bad about it. I just He was away on location a lot, and I was just really lonely. And I met this guy at work, and he was younger than me, and it was just, I don't know, I was just it was just about the sex. <laughs> right. It was, you know, so, but I felt really bad because I didn't have a chance to tell him. You felt bad getting caught. You didn't feel bad about what you did. No, I didn't feel bad about what I did. Not at the time. I did not. Thinking about it later, I mean, it was a bad Late, thing. Later after he left you, you felt bad. <laughs> no, years later. You know, a few years later, it was like, okay, that was not something that I should have done. I should have been honest w with how I was feeling. So you know, I, I had a relationship with someone who I was crazy about, and uh, she cheated, and I found out about it, and, and she lied about it, and uh, just told me that I was a controlling person.
and uh, all I wanted to do was control her, and uh, uh, that I was paranoid and all of this. Well, I, I pulled all that stuff. Right, but 12 years later, she wrote me a letter and said, well, yeah, 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 I was cheating. He didn't believe it, though. He kept on it. He hacked my computer. He, you know, found emails, found stuff. He was right. I, you know what I say about this stuff? When you get caught, why lie? Right. You should just be honest. That is Might as well. <laughs> you know, or just don't do it, or just say you're going to do it and do it. You yeah, know? I mean, uh, if if you're not happy that your husband's out of town all the time, it's time to call an attorney. I mean, well, right. why bring soap opera and drama into your life? Well, and, you know, we had young kids, and I just didn't, you know, feel like breaking up the home. And, like I said, the guy was cute and paid me the attention that I needed that I wasn't getting. And so uh, your husband did what after he found out and you denied it and he said he knew it had happened? Well, what happened to him? He went pretty crazy. You know, he was really upset for a while. We're still together, though. We've worked through it. <laughs> Does that mean just that uh, the two of you, like, kind of have your own space and do your own thing sometimes? Or what does that mean? Um, that means that <laughs> I'm behaving myself, and I guess he is, too. I think, honestly, the bottom line was we both really loved each other, and we realized that how it, what we were doing wasn't working at the time. So we changed some things, you know. I don't know. I don't know. I I know most people, you know, give up or break up after that kind of thing. I'm, I don't know why I'm we just, didn't. I am just speculating here based on the tone of your voice. Even though you're together with him, you did it for the kids, and you're not having that much fun. <laughs> Isn't that right, darling? <sighs> That's true. And as soon as your youngest one is old enough to function on their own, you're heading for the attorney. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't want to hurt him. He's a good guy. But he you already him. did hurt him. And I do have a lot of respect for him. He is a hard worker. He is a good guy. You know? By the way, what I find fascinating, and I'm not picking on you. There's plenty of women who've done what you've done. Um, what I find fascinating is, is women who enjoy living this wonderful lifestyle with guys who work hard. Mm -hmm. and they bring home lots of cashola because they work so hard. Right. And then these women complain about being bored because the guy's never around. Exactly. So they take time out for their manicures and pedicures and trips to Starbucks during the oh, day. Oh, and I love my mani pedis and the Starbucks. Right, and, <laughs> and riding around on their Range Rovers all day long. And Oh, I'm so bored. And then they go out and have sex with someone else. God, did you peg me. <laughs> I know your type, darling. I've been your husband. <laughs> well, that means you're not a bad guy either. And it means I was a fool, and uh, unlike your husband, uh, I decided I had to live alone, and now I do. Well, that's good, and I'm glad. You know, I'm glad that you're happy. I am. I'm a lot happier this way. I'll tell you that. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Like is one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likes Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at one 800 800 tom Have you caught someone cheating recently? Are you on the verge of catching someone cheating? It's Laura on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Pops. How are you? Doing okay, dear. Hi. Um, yeah, I just I just put on the radio right now and to hear the topic. And, I mean, my husband, I'm married. I'm 23. But we're not living together. I'm staying with my mom right now, and we have a 10-month-old son. What? 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 Wait. You're married? Yes, I'm married. But you um, don't live with your husband? No, because uh, there's a restraining order right now between us, which actually will be taken off tomorrow. We have to go back to court tomorrow. Against the two of you? Yeah, the two of, you, the two of us. What have the two of you been doing to get a restraining order against you? Well, I mean, uh, about a month ago, when we were living together, it's just that, um, you know, we were uh, arguing, and I guess some nosy neighbor called the cops on us, and the cops came and, you know, questioned us and everything. And, and at least one of you took a swing at the other, right? Well, he didn't really hit me. It was just a shove, you know? <laughs> but... I guess I told the cops that, and they consider that like a bad thing, you know. Uh, yes, that's called uh, that's that's called assault. Yeah, but I mean, it's a criminal offense, it's well, domestic violence. 
I know that, but I didn't want the cop to take them to take him. Doesn't to matter jail. what you want. You told them he committed a crime. Well, in, in the end, they ended up taking him, and I ended up getting a lawyer because I didn't want him staying in there, you know. So I ended up getting a lawyer, and with and three days after, he was out, and they just they let him out on a restraining order. And they well, let, wait, wait, wait! They let him out on a restraining order. What does that mean? Well, they just, he can't be near me, have no contact, no nothing for 30 days. And he has to take a class for a whole year. Right. Once a week. And he has to pay to go, too. Yeah, he has to pay. And, well, I mean, I give him money sometimes, too, so he could go. How do you give him money if he's supposed to stay away from you? Well, I mean, I send it to him, but we don't really have, it's really hard having no contact because he would help me out a lot. with. So you do have contact with him. No, 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 no. I give the money to his brother, you know, because he can't be near me or anything like that. Because, you know, I don't want us to get in trouble. Or I don't want this becoming a bigger problem than I already did in the first place. But the thing is that um, I've been thinking in this whole month that we haven't had any contact. Um, he has He has an addiction with alcohol. You know, there's certain people that are he's an alcoholic i think so he doesn't think so but i but but when did you figure this out after i got married you know and you already had a kid at that point no no no. we got married first and then we i became pregnant about two months later and was he drinking yet at that point um put it this way i met him drinking but i thought he drank every now and then i didn't know it was an everyday thing so you were in a real rush to get married this was very important you get married as soon as possible well actually um no it was kind of from his side of his family and my side of the family you know because um they just kind of rushed it in a way why and did you well, why did you go along with it well, because I love him. That's the other reason. But that's too. not the point. You love him, but you didn't know anything about the guy. Yeah, that's true. That's another thing why it's, this marriage has been a lot of problems. Because after we got married, I started finding out who he really was. That, and, that's not the time to find out who somebody is. No, it's, it's not at all. I mean, I'm finding out the hard way. And then and, you had a baby with someone you didn't know. Um, That's true. I Why'd mean, you do he, that? He wanted a son, too, and he told me... He I don't care what he wanted. You, you, do you think that was a good idea? It wasn't because, I mean, I'm only 20, and I felt like I've been married for a long time. Like but but why, why, why are you doing this? I mean, it's not... Think of a kid, if not yourself. Do you think that's a good thing to do to a kid? No, it's not. A lot of people tell me... I mean, I it's right now it's up to me to choose a lifestyle for our son. And whether I want him to be in a broken home or to come out of a broken home, because right now to this day, me and my husband, like, like before this happened, we would just argue all the time. And and even after his restraining order is over, he's still going to be a drunk. That's true. And well, that he, your he husband will be that, a drunk. Um, he 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 complains to me that I'm a nagging bitch because. I always tell him what to do, and for me, telling him what to do is not to drink in front of the baby or take a day off. Donna, you, know? you can't change another person. I know, and I'm thinking if um, if we should go to marriage counseling and if that could help. But I don't know because it's not just our problems, but his addiction too. But 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 uh, again, dear, you you picked the wrong person. You've already admitted that. I know I did, but I didn't know he was like this. I mean, but then you I get, knew, what are you going to do? You're going to try to you're going to try to fix a bad break job here. Are you going to try to? Uh, uh, I mean, the, the fact is, he's an alcoholic. He's he's violent. He now has a criminal record. And and this is the father of your child, and and you're going to live with him for the rest of your life. I mean, he 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 honestly isn't a bad bad person at all. The way it da seems like. Darling, stop that. it! Don't even go there. Don't oh. even go there. What you're doing is called enabling. You are codependent and you are you are enabling an alcoholic and an abuser to keep being an alcoholic and an abuser by making excuses for him. That's hard because I, I don't want to be with another guy in that sort of way, if you know what I mean. What sort of way? You don't want to have sex with another guy? You don't want to be married to another guy? What are you talking about? Because it's just he's been the only one I've practically been with. And, well, our son... I, 
want to bring another man into our son's life. Well, so we then can- fine. Then in uh, then in seventeen and a half years or whatever, you'll be able to date somebody else. But uh, what you would stay with an abusive alcoholic just because you can't be with another man? Um. Uh, Oh, I don't want that either. I don't want to live miserable for the rest of my life at, at all either. Right. So fixing this really, in my opinion, uh, fixing this is, is not going to succeed because you married the wrong person. And you know it. Yes. I, he thinks the same way, you know. Just, well, if he thinks the same way, it's it's a done deal. Yeah, that's true. But um, I, I don't know because I... Don't want to put like the divorce papers on him yet. I'd rather he do it on me. And for alimony, I really don't care about that. Um, I just want him to pay for his responsibility, which is his son, and to help me. He's not. He, you're not going to get much alimony anyway. How long have you been married? Uh, well, I don't know. It's, it's going to be two years in January. Right. And even if we were married for five years, I wouldn't really care about that. I what does he do him. for a living? He's a construction worker, full time, for union. Right. That's so. He sometimes does. he works and sometimes he doesn't. Um. Actually, that's very true. Um. He could be working for let's just say two months straight, and then they could let him out, and he'll be out of work for about a week sometimes. And we years. are in a recession where people are getting laid off, and construction projects are being shut down. That can't be good for him either, right? No. But I'm thinking so what a like, life you've chosen for yourself. You've chosen an alcoholic, abusive loser uh, to, to have a baby with and be married to. And now you don't want to fix it. I, I, I want to get away for my own sake, too, and the sake of our son, because I don't want him growing up. Because if he sees his parents fighting all the time, then he's going to have a Well, then life. just get a divorce and be done with it. You can get a divorce for 350 bucks. Get it done. Yeah, I just. You're already uh, living with your parents. Just get it done now. To go through all that paperwork again, because I already had it in the beginning of the year, and then darling, could... you gotta do it. Yeah. You have to do it. And the funny part, of the irony of this, is that when we first got married, he used to listen to your show a lot, and I used to hate it. You know, I'm like, oh, because you know, I I don't agree with some certain things about what you say about women. But the more I started listening to you, the more you started making sense. And the more I thought, I'm like, I wish I've heard of Tom Likas before I even got married. Well, that much I understand. Uh, look, uh, had he followed my rules, he wouldn't have gotten married. Uh, yeah, I would have stayed single for a while. And you wouldn't be in the position you're in now. Oh, no. And I hate the part that I'm like, I'm only 20 and to be in this whole mess. And now to have a son that obviously I love very much. Uh, uh, I don't know. And well, it's just going to be hard because I know there's and officially what you say, you know, what you tell men. It's like, you know, you don't want to be dating a single chick that already has the child, you know. And when I think of that, I'm like, well, I'm only 20. And if there's going to be guys thinking like that, then it feels like I'm just going to be single for the rest of my life, you know. And I'm the kind of person that wants to have the nice, good family where I'm the... Well, much as I would love to believe that every man on planet Earth listens to my show, uh, there are men who don't. And there are even men like your husband uh, who listen to the show and then don't follow the rules. So I wouldn't take it for granted you'll never be with someone else. But uh, for you, being in another relationship is not what you need right now. Yeah, you want- need to learn to live on your own. Yeah, I mean, the, the good thing is that I have my parents that I'm seeing with, and they were helping me out. And but at some point, you're gonna you're gonna need to move out and be on your own, on yeah. your own. I need to go back to school, like how I used to after high school. <laughs> yeah, and look, you what well, you didn't go to college because you met a guy. Well, I I started going to just the community college right after high school, Cerritos. And then and you met a guy, and you stopped going. Exactly, I just stopped going. Which is stupid. Yes, it was because I wanted to be the stay-at-home wife that has the dinner ready when he's home and all that yeah, stuff. But you could have done that at 25 after you got a degree. I know. I just, I, I don't know. That's why I said I wish I would have listened to you before because when it comes to marriage, you just, you make completely sense, you know? And I, hopefully there's both guys and women that do listen to you so they won't be in the same position I am. Hang on a second, Laura. Mike, what did you want to say to Laura? 
I want to tell this girl, you sound just like my sister did until her boyfriend just started beating the hell out of her. This guy loves the bottle more than he loves you and your kid. He's, he's got to help himself. He's an adult. He is not going to change for you. Let me, I have news for you. He is not going to change for you. Yeah, that's true. He has told me before. I don't know. He jokes around when he tells me um, he prefers alcohol over anything, even with another being with another woman, you know? And don't don't defend him that he's really a nice guy. He's violent. He's a drunk. He's not a nice guy. You, I swear, I thought I was listening to my sister for a minute. He is not a nice guy. He is not going to change for you. You need to you need to get that through your thick skull, girl. And I'm not here to you know knock you down. But I, if if this is what it takes to tell you, don't be an idiot. So be it. This guy is not going to change for you. I guarantee it. It sounds you sound just like my sister. Laura, Mike, thank you for the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM-TOM-TOM. 1-800-5800-8666. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Been asking whether you have caught someone cheating recently or if you're on the verge of catching them. It's Kim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Tom. This is Kim. I know. I just said that. <laughs> How are you doing? I, I recently found my husband cheating. And to make a long story short, we've been married for seven years. Before that, we were um, dating for seven years prior to being married. So I've known him for about 14 years. And I recently found out that he had been cheating on me with one of my friends. And also... At some friend? Yeah. <laughs> some friend and i also know her husband but pretty much was cheating on me um to make a long story short found out that he's a sex addict so i'm just trying to figure out where i should go with my life with this should i stay with him he's pretty much um depleted all of our finances and everything and i just i just need your advice <laughs> you're not Taylor leone are you no <laughs> just checking <laughs> you read that story, right, about David Duchovny? You know what? For the first time, I saw um, Californication last night on TV. Yes. And it really didn't portray what it is like to live with a sex addict. So, you know, I can't relate to any of that. But Now, when you say he's a sex addict, uh, what is that like? Well, for me, it's just ever since I found out, I've been going through depression spurts, anxiety spurts, with, wondering whether or not he's uh, lying to me, cheating on me, if he's on the Internet, um, basically just, like, living in fear day to day, like, on what, what he's doing. You know, he said that he only cheated on me once, um, but to the extent of it, I still don't know because I feel like he's still hiding stuff from me. I see. And uh, so he's cheated on you with many people, not just your friend. Well, he said one person, and then um, something. someone had told me that he had sent a picture of his genital area to really? someone else. Yeah. And so I questioned him about that. This is somebody said, you know? Well, I know the person, not the person he sent it to, but I know their friend. So, and, so, so the person he said it to told your friend, right? And she told you, right? And so you asked him, and he said, "No, of course not. I didn't do that." Well, well, this was after I heard or found out that he cheated on me, right. and so he pretty much gave me um, access to his email account, and I saw all the different emails that he was sending to women that he didn't know. Now, why uh, women he didn't know? He meets them on the internet. Yeah, he would just send, just, just to have that feel good inside of him, he would send out, like, messages to all kinds of different women, and they would send messages back to him. Well, it wasn't just to feel good. It was to go out and get laid. Well, yeah. The end result would be, yeah, he would go out and get laid. Look at this, honey. My self-esteem's at an all-time high. All these complete strangers I met on Craigslist, they all wrote back to me. Yeah. I sent them a picture of the uh, of, of the plumbing, and they, they wrote back, and uh, now they want to meet me. Isn't that great? Yeah. Now, how did you not know this about the guy? Well, you know, during the whole time I've been married with him, you know, I kind of had, 
I always had this feeling that he was hiding something from me. Really? I just didn't know what it was. And you could ask anybody that knows him, they'll say he's a great guy. And it came to, it, it was a shock for, for me as well as, as a lot of people. Well, and because you're the only person who needs him to be monogamous. The other people think he's a great guy because they're not depending on him to be monogamous. Right. So, of course, he's a great guy to everybody else. Right. I'm sure all your friends love him. Oh, God, yeah. Literally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By the way, what happened to that friend of yours who uh, who, who he nailed? Uh, well, she basically, after a while, called me up and apologized and said that it should never happen. And I asked her why it happened. She couldn't give me a good enough reason. I think it was just she was just jealous of me. Because she's and, a skank. Yeah, well, exactly. And she's married on top of that with kids of her own. Did you call her husband? Oh, yeah, her husband knows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is she still your friend? Oh, no. Mm -mm. Okay. Nope. Just checking. No. <laughs> and now you're wondering if you should stay with him. By the yeah. way, if you always felt that way about him, that he was hiding something, why do you have kids with a guy like that? Well, this is after I had kids with him. Oh, so you, you, you said always you felt that way, but now you're saying not always, just since you had all the kids. Well... <laughs> Right. After I got married, after I became married to him is when I felt like this change in our relationship. How many kids did you have at that point? Um, well, we had kids right away. So, like, when maybe after two months of being married, I got pregnant. So, and, and then when did you realize that he was like this? Uh, seven years into our marriage. So you didn't know anything for seven years, but, but you knew he was hiding something. Yeah, I felt like he was hiding something. But you, I didn't but know you what. stayed with him and you had more kids with him. Right. Why? Because I just didn't know. I just didn't know if it was my paranoia or if there really was something out there that he was hiding. I, I never he, worry about whether it's my paranoia. If I feel that way, I get the hell out. It's the Tom Likas Show.